Hi everyone, this is Cooking with Kurt. Today, my husband Donald and I are going to show you how to make pork floss milk buns. These are milk buns made using the Tangjong method, then stuffed and topped with pork floss, also called rosong. Rosong is a dried pork which has a light and fluffy texture similar to that of cotton and was one of my favorite snacks growing up. My mm -hmm. mom used to pack it in my school lunches and I loved it. Aww. This recipe was requested by Instagram handle Katerine19. Thanks so much for your request and we hope you like this video. To start, we're going to make the Tangjong starter. In a small saucepan, add in three tablespoons of bread flour and one fourth cup of water. Whisk them together till the flour has dissolved and there are no more lumps. Add in one fourth cup of whole milk and continue to whisk together to combine. Set this over low heat, stirring constantly with a wooden spoon for three to five minutes. After three to five minutes of stirring over low heat, it should look like a thick paste but still have a pourable consistency. It's done when the spoon starts to leave tracks on the bottom of the pot when stirring. Turn off the heat and transfer the Tangjong starter into a small heat-proof bowl. Cover with plastic wrap touching the Tangjong to prevent a skin from forming and let it come to room temperature. The starter will continue to firm up as it cools. Tangjong is an Asian baking technique where a small portion of the flour and liquid is heated before baking, which pre-gelatinizes the starches in the flour so the flour can absorb more liquid. This makes the resulting bread softer and more moist, and it will stay fresh at room temperature for a longer period. And who doesn't prefer softer, moister, and longer lasting bread? I know I do. Tangzhong spokesperson <laughs> over here. <laughs> That's right. While the Tangzhong starter is cooling, we're gonna work on the remaining dough. Take one large egg and four tablespoons of unsalted butter and leave them on the counter to come to room temperature. Cut the butter into four pieces. In a microwavable bowl, microwave half a cup of whole milk until it is scalding about one and a half minutes in the microwave to a minimum of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. This deactivates the whey protein in the milk, which may hinder gluten development. While it's hot, whisk one tablespoon of granulated sugar into the milk. Let the milk cool down by whisking it constantly till it reaches 105 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. When the milk is 105 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, whisk in one envelope, which is one fourth ounce or two and one fourth teaspoon of active dry yeast till it gets dissolved and let it proof for about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes of proofing, it should start to look foamy on top. If it doesn't get foamy, it means you've got bad yeast. Bad yeast, you're drunk. Go to bed. Get out of here, bad yeast. <laughs> and start again with new yeast. In the bowl of your stand mixer, add in two and a half cups of bread flour, two tablespoons of non-fat powdered milk, three tablespoons of granulated sugar, and one teaspoon salt. Using the regular beater attachment, mix this on medium-low speed to combine the dry ingredients. Stop the mixer and add in the one large room temperature egg, the yeast milk mixture, and the Tangzong starter mixture. Mix this together on low speed just until the ingredients are combined. With a spatula, Scrape the batter from the sides of the bowl and off of the beater. Remove the beater attachment and cover loosely with plastic wrap. Let the mixture rest for five minutes. This will allow the flour to soak up the liquid. Then attach the dough hook attachment and knead on low speed about level three for five minutes. After five minutes of kneading on low speed, Add in the pieces of room temperature unsalted butter, four tablespoons total, one piece at a time, waiting for the butter to get incorporated before adding in the next piece, about 30 seconds to one minute between each addition of butter. Once all the butter has been added, turn the speed up to medium, about level five or so, and continue kneading the dough for another five minutes till the dough is smooth, springy, 
and no longer sticks to the side of the bowl. Take a large bowl, oil it very well, and transfer the resulting dough into the oiled bowl. Cover the dough with plastic wrap and let it sit for one and a half to two hours. This is the first proof and will allow the dough to rise up and puff up. It should look something like this after two hours. After the first proof, we're ready to assemble the pork floss milk buns. Take a large sheet pan. This is a half sheet pan that's 13 by 18 inches and line it with parchment paper. In a small bowl, add in one third cup of QP mayonnaise and two tablespoons of condensed milk and whisk them until they are well combined. Have two cups of pork floss ready in a separate bowl. Punch down the dough and turn it onto a smooth, clean surface. Roll it into a long tube and divide it into 10 approximately equal pieces, estimating by eye and weight in your hands. Take away dough from bigger pieces and add them to the smaller pieces till all the balls are about the same size. Form the dough into tight spheres by rolling each piece in your palms with cupped hands. Do this for all 10 pieces. This ensures that there are no air bubbles in the dough. Then set them aside to rest under plastic wrap to prevent them from drying out. Then take one sphere at a time and use a rolling pin to flatten each sphere into a circular disc shape that's about four inches in diameter. The thickness of the dough should taper towards the edges of the circle so the disc will be thicker in the center and thinner around the edges. Add about one teaspoon of the QP mayo mixture to the middle of the disc, spreading it out a bit. Then add one tablespoon of pork floss on top. Fold the disc together by bringing the opposite sides of the circle together and then pinching the closed circle together tightly, then twisting the top to ensure the bun is sealed. Invert the bun, placing it seam side down on the prepared parchment paper lined sheet pan, and shape it with your hands as necessary to create a more even circular shape. Repeat this with the other nine pieces of dough and QP mayo mixture and pork floss. Cover the formed buns with plastic wrap as you're forming the remaining buns to prevent the formed buns from drying out. Once all 10 buns are formed, keep them covered loosely with plastic wrap and let them rise again until they are doubled in size about one hour. This is the second proof. Keep the remaining QP mayo in the fridge, which will be used later for the topping. The rosong can be left at room temperature. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit about 15 minutes before the end of the second proof. When you're ready to bake the buns, take a small bowl, add in one egg and one tablespoon of water, and whisk them together till they are well combined to make an egg wash. Brush the top of the resin buns with this egg wash. This will create a nice golden brown finish after baking. Bake in the preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 17 minutes, or until the tops are golden brown. If you have a thermometer, buns are done when they read 185 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit in the middle of each bun. Try not to let it bake past 200 degrees Fahrenheit. When the inside goes past 200 degrees Fahrenheit, the buns will start becoming a little dry. Once out of the oven, let them cool slightly, about five minutes, then transfer them onto a cooling rack. Pork floss buns, pork floss buns, one a penny, two a penny, pork floss buns. Is that an original song? Yes, it is. <laughs> when the buns have cooled completely, after cooling on the rack for an additional 30 minutes or so, only dress the buns you're planning to serve immediately. Brush the top of each bun with a light layer of the prepared QP mayo mixture. Invert and press the top of the bun, the part covered with QP mayo mixture, into the bowl of pork floss to get a light layer of pork floss on top. Repeat this with all the buns you are serving immediately. 
Store the remaining undressed buns in an airtight container. They will keep at room temperature for three to five days. Store the remaining QP mayo mixture in the fridge and commercially bought pork floss does not need to be refrigerated. Just store it in an airtight container. And there it is. Pork floss milk buns using the Tang Zhong method. Ang Sarawa. Mmm, so good, yum. I love the texture with this Tang Zhong method. The milk bread is so soft and fluffy. And it goes perfectly well with the fluffy, cottony texture of roast song. So good. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching. Please let us know in the comment section below if you're planning to make these pork floss milk buns. Send us pictures of your creations on Facebook and Instagram. The links are below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Cooking with Kurt. And don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified when we post new cooking videos. And for our written recipes, be sure to check out cookingwithkurt.com. Maraming salamat!